Rodigus, how many worlds are in the galaxy? Specifically, how many can you reach? Countless, innumerable, immeasurable. So many worlds, it is beyond understanding. That's great. Good, good. No, can you put a number to that, since Rodigus can't count? Within knowledge, there are over 10,000 worlds in the Milky Way galaxy, though if we extend beyond the realms of chaos and the warp, we can touch upon other galaxies as well, beyond the site of the Astronomicon. Of course, we count worlds that we don't have human settlements on them, either the Imperium or Chaos. We can quadruple that number, including dead worlds. Oh. Uh, I really didn't expect an answer. I was planning on saying something sarcastic, but hey, that's an answer. Today we'll look at stars without numbers. I'm specifically looking at the free version of this game because I really want to support a creator. And the fact that they give a free version makes me want to support them and not pirate a paid version of the game. Given how many of my friends hype this game, I think I will purchase it as soon as the IRS stops using me like a dry flashlight. This version has 9 chapters and an index. Looking over the table of contents, it gives me a general idea that this free version is a speedrun version of the game. It tells a fast and loose version of the game. It's so far into the future when where magic has made firearms obsolete and stars in the sky are beginning to die out. This is a time where life is fading. It's got three pages describing the world, then it goes into character creation, which is 34 pages, then the basic rules, which are 22 pages, then gives more about the world, creating a campaign, and so much more. We'll be focusing on the rules and character creation, because with any game, you should be able to either pull a world that's pre-written to be easy to get into, or make your own unique world and setting. So let's look at how the system works. First page seems to be an entire page about how to come up with a character concept. Honestly, this seems like a lot. The bloat is kind of insane, but at least it really answers all the questions about what sort of character you should make. It also says there's a super character version called Legates but we won't go into that. Your ability scores are like D&D. &D. You've got Strength, Dexterity, Constitution, Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma. You can get them in multiple different ways, though it requests two of them. Either roll in order, which I don't like, or assign an array as you wish which are the following numbers 14 12 11 10 9 and 7. when rolling you'll roll 3d6 directly no extra dice no removing the lowest just straight the book says if you choose to roll you'll then pick any of the numbers and change it to 14. then we get to modifiers this does not work like any other game I've seen before. This is a whole new ball game right here. So let's go on the list. The number 
3 gives you a minus 2. Numbers 4 through 7 give you a minus 1. 8 through 13 is no modifier. 14 through 17 is a plus 1 and 18 is a plus 2. At this point, I realize I accidentally skipped a bit of a part. At this point in character creation, you are level 0. It recommends the highest you create a character is level 1, which I feel sort of odd, but it's also a really good way to prevent being sued for being too similar to other systems. Which I don't think you can sue over numbers, but whatever. But Hasbro kind of has a habit of trying to claim X, Y, and Z is owned by them, and then sending Pinkertons to people they accidentally send stuff to. But at level 0, you'll pick out a background as well, which... We'll, we're not going to look into. I'm realizing I forgot to edit this part of my script. You'll then pick your additional skills, which can also be rolled from. It doesn't recommend either. I'd recommend picking just to make your character yours. You'll pick two skills from the list that your background lists. If your background says any, the book sort of implies but doesn't outright say that you have to roll your skills. You cannot pick anything from the growth table which I assume to be granted as you level up. There's also quick lists which I'm not sure that the difference between that and the learned list but okay. It says if you roll for skills, you roll three times, then divide the rolls between learned and growth tables, which makes the random nature just better, but whatever. It explains a few things a bit, but they're pretty self-explanatory, so meh. After all this, you then get to choose your class. There are three, arguably four classes. Warrior, which is pretty standard, Expert, which is your Diet Rogue, and Mage, again, obvious. But then there's a fourth, which is the Adventurer, who's essentially your combo class. You'll then f choose a focus, which really is dependent on your class. You can choose any of the focuses for free, but as an Expert, or partial expert, you'll get to choose one non-combat for free. You can combine the two to make it a level 2 focus instead of a level 1 focus, if you choose that. Warriors and partial warriors get a free focus that is combat related. Same as before, double, you can double dip. Mages don't get any specialties. Then there's a bit about playing non-humans, but we'll skip this because there's like 19 steps to character creation. I'm gonna try and go faster. Get an extra skill to fit your character, that's done. If you take have taken mage or partial mage, you get a traditional magic stuff, which looks like subclasses. High Mage, Necromancer, or Elementalist, it also mentions Healer and Vowed, but it mentions that after talking about Partial Mages, so hell if I know. You then roll hit points, adding your Constitution modifier to a minimum of 1. If You'll then add a number from your class. A D1 is rolled, Warriors get a plus 1, Mages get a minus 1, Experts get Jack, Adventurer, have their own table of bullshit. BAB comes next. It's based on your class. There's a fancy table for that. Woohoo! Equipment! Choose a package, roll 3d6, multiply by 10. If you choose the rolling, you can buy your gear. There's still a quite a bit left, including combat information, and AC, and in all honesty, that stuff is pretty self-explanatory there. There's, like I said, a free version of this book, 
and I would really recommend picking that up as the introduction. If you find yourself liking the game, which admittedly I'm kind of middling on, then I would recommend buying it from either Drive Through RPG or somewhere else. It's really not a bad game, but it's kind of insane that this is the free version of the book, and it has 343 pages. But uh, let's get to the final score. So, like I said, I'm rather middling on this book. I'm giving it a 75%. In all honesty, which kind of points out, I think I need to start going over some of my older videos and reanalyzing them. But you've got one week to corrupt me, Rodigus, or else I'm getting the beating stick. And that's a loofah for you. So, shove off. <laughs>